Hi, good evening. My name is Gabriel Gonzalez, and in today's lecture, we're going to talk about Medicaid estate recovery. Some quick disclaimers. I am not a licensed attorney. I am not licensed to practice law. I'm not qualified to give any type of legal advice. This video should not be construed as legal advice in any way, shape, or form. The purpose of this video is strictly for education and informational purposes only. If you guys are looking to seek any type of legal advice in the areas of elder law or estate planning, I strongly suggest that you speak to a licensed, qualified attorney in the areas of elder law and estate planning in your area of jurisdiction. Without further ado, I'd like to discuss Medicaid estate recovery, okay? So in some of my other videos, which I've elaborated about Medicaid in relation to long-term care planning, um, one of the things that I've mentioned is that Medicaid, unlike Medicare, will help pay for an individual's long-term care, whether that's in the home or in a nursing home facility, okay? So the problem with Medicaid or I wouldn't say the problem with Medicaid, but one little caveat with respects to Medicaid that a lot of people do not know or may not be aware of is that even though an individual may qualify for Medicaid to pay for their long-term care needs, what people do not realize or may not be aware of is that Medicaid has the right to put a lien on your assets, on your probated assets, and they can recover from your estate whatever Medicaid has paid you, okay? So as I mentioned, Medicaid law, Medicaid is a federal and state joint program. Medicaid has federal law, and the states can choose to adopt the federal laws or adopt their own variations of the federal law. So as I mentioned, Medicaid rules do vary from state to state. But Back in 19, I would say roughly around 1993, this law was passed. I know I'm abbreviating it. OBRA of 93. That stands for the Omnibus Rec Budget Reconciliation Act. The Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1993 required Medicaid to go after the estate, the probate estate of an individual who was a recipient of Medicaid payments to recover what Medicaid has paid for those individuals, okay? So that was the birth of the Medicaid estate recovery laws. It started at the federal level and the federal government had required each individual state to incorporate Medicaid estate recovery. So we're going to use a very simple example, okay? John Doe has been very helpful in these examples, so we're going to use John Doe again, okay? John Doe is 85 years old. His only asset for this purpose and example is his home. He's single and his only asset is his home. The value of that home is $500,000. So we have John Doe. His home is worth $500,000. Now, he applies for Medicaid. That's his only asset. He's able to pass the five-year look-back period. Medicaid looked back in the five years. There was no non-compensated transfers. Okay? He's home free. His only asset was his home. Okay? Now, under Medicaid law, as I will mention in the Medicaid video, or, or I have mentioned in the Medicaid video is that Medicaid has certain exemptions built into the law. 
What's an exemption? An exemption means that there are certain assets that the Medicaid applicant can keep and not have it counted towards an available resource for Medicaid purposes, okay? So for the most part, a house would be considered an exempt asset. Here in the state of New York, you can actually, in 2019, you can exempt up to $878,000 of equity in that home, okay? So, John Doe lives in New York. Clearly, the $500,000 equity value is much less than the $878,000, so he's home free. So, Medicaid, so he qualifies for Medicaid. Now, here's the catch. In order for that home to not be an available resource, he has to inform Medicaid that his intentions of going into that nursing home is not to live there for an indefinite period of time, that he does have some intention of returning back to the home, he just doesn't know when. So as long as you've sort of communicated that to Medicaid, then it's not an available resource. Um, it would be an exemption for him to get his foot door into the nursing home and for Medicaid to pay for that, okay? Actually, let me kind of clarify that. He, he, he will get into the nursing home, no doubt, but for Medicaid to pay for that, as long as his, his home value is under $878,000 and he does have some intention to return back to the home, meaning that he's not gonna stay in the nursing home for an indefinite period of time, he's home free. That house is exempt for Medicaid purposes. Sadly and unfortunately, 10 years later, John Doe passes away, okay? The only asset in John Doe's name, in his estate, was that home. While John Doe was in that nursing home, Medicaid put a lien on that property, okay? Actually, the technical term is called a Medicaid lien. His only next of kin was his adult child. He had one son, he was like 45 years old. Now, the question is, does John Doe Jr., his son, after his father passes away, does he get the house? No. Let's say Medicaid, over the course of those 10 years, paid out about a million dollars for John Doe's, you know, paid a million dollars towards John Doe's nursing home expenses, okay? Medicaid put a lien on John Doe's home. When John Doe passes away, the house was still in John Doe's name. That was his only asset in the estate. Does John Doe Jr. get that home? Unfortunately not. Because Medicaid put a lien on that home, after John Doe passed away, the state of New York took John's home, John's home, John Doe's home, sold it in order to pay back Medicaid for what Medicaid had paid John Doe Sr. while he was in a nursing home. So sadly, John Doe Jr. didn't get nothing. That is what's called Medicaid estate recovery. This is why when it comes to the areas of Medicaid planning, getting your foot in the door is half the battle. The other half of the battle is asset protection. Because John Doe did not do any asset protection planning, there was nothing that John Doe Jr. could have done to save on the inheritance of that home. So it's very important that when you do any type of long-term care planning, especially where Medicaid is going to pay for the cost of your nursing home, asset protection planning is critical to avoid this unfortunate situation from happening. 
So hopefully I've given you a good overview of what Medicaid estate recovery is, and I was able to explain by example an unfortunate situation that could have been easily avoided. Now I'm not gonna let all the goodies out of the bag, but in my subsequent videos, okay, I am actually going to explain what John Doe Sr. could have done to possibly avoid this estate recovery. So on that note, as you see on TV a lot, to be continued. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my lecture. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two. Have a good night.